2018, Sierra Brown and Unique Atkins, two sisters, were executed in their apartment before it was set on fire. A 17-year-old boy was arrested for the crimes. The DA's office filed a transfer motion to prosecute the teen in adult court. Now, when L.A. County DA George Gascon took office, he issued a policy mandating all transfer motions be withdrawn. Recently, Gascon lifted that blanket ban, and now the murder or the mother of the murdered sisters is relieved. A transfer motion has been filed again, but she believes Gascon is only changing his policies because of recent criticism and not because he understands how he has devastated their lives. But some families are not getting that second chance, as we're about to show you. Under DA Gascon, more than 70 pending motions to send minors to adult court were withdrawn. 25 cases that were tried in criminal court were resentenced in the juvenile system. Gascon believes even when we are talking about heinous crimes like murder, children should be treated like children. It was going to happen to someone that day. Someone was going to be taken out. That day, it was Cynthia Carrera's brother, Alfredo, and his best friend, Jose Flores Velasquez. They were starting their lives. Alfredo, week shy of becoming a dad. Jose had just accepted a job at NASA. In 2019, the two were outside Alfredo's home in South LA. A car approached, multiple shots were fired. Jose and Alfredo were killed. These people went into that neighborhood with an intention to hurt someone. Three gang members, including 17-year-old Shanice D, were arrested for the murders. Court documents show Shanice bragged on social media saying it was retaliation against a rival gang. They wanted to kill. The victims, not gang members. Shanice was facing gang, gun, multiple murder enhancements, which would have meant life without the possibility of parole. Prop 57 passed in 2016 mandates that 16 and 17 year olds have transfer hearings to decide if their case ends up in adult court. Now, L.A. County's D.A. at the time, Jackie Lacey, motioned to transfer the case, but with COVID and other delays, the case stayed pending. When D.A. George Gascon took office, the request to transfer Shanice was withdrawn under a blanket ban on trying teens as adults. Now, those are never easy decisions. I feel hor horrible for those families. Gascon recently modified the policy, saying in exceptional circumstances, criminal jurisdiction may be appropriate for youth offenders, but it still doesn't change Cynthia's brother's case. Shanice will be released when she's 25 or before that. I tried to say, okay, how is this possible? What's possible? Because someone's making it possible. Bragging on social media, it's offensive, right? It's disturbing. But if you talk to a clinical psychologist that deals with young people, they would tell you that actually is very consistent with their station life. Gascon cites studies showing adolescent brain development isn't complete until age 25. He says research indicates incarcerating children doesn't enhance public safety and increases recidivism. I didn't care to think about his family. Mike Mendoza was 15. I didn't care to think about the consequences. When he participated in a gang-related murder, he was tried as an adult and given a life sentence. Everybody seemed to be as old as my father and my uncles, and I was scared. I thought I was going to end up dying in prison. That essentially made me worry about my safety more than rehabilitation. In 2013, SB 260 was passed. It allowed youth like Mike in adult prison to have sentences reviewed after serving 10 years. That hope of a second chance? All I was doing was just lashing out for love. Pushed him to work on himself and address childhood traumas. Being bullied, sexually abused, it gave me a chance to give back to society once I was able to prove that I wasn't that 15 year old kid anymore. Mike was released after 17 years. Now, he's a policy director at the Anti-Recidivism Coalition, the same group that helped push the bill. Policy saved my life. That led 
to Mike's release. ARC partners with LA County to help people navigate life outside, during and after prison. On this night, as a teen, I was facing 15 years to life. Mike is teaching the Advanced Leadership Program, a class made up of formerly incarcerated people learning how to advocate for policies on criminal justice reform. We believe wholeheartedly that kids deserve a second chance. Last year, Kalik Oshifeso on the left was seen on a neighbor's security camera with a friend smoking. The friend, unprovoked, shoots Kalik. Under Gascon's policy, the 16-year-old murderer will be out before his 25th birthday. It's no secret that, that ultimately it's, it's a community that suffers. On a ride along with the Sheriff Department's gang unit out of East LA, Sergeant Frank Alvarado told us his detectives hear it often on the streets. This case is going to go nowhere. Uh, with a new DA, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna walk. They believe many gangs are taking advantage of the softer on crime policies at the DA's office. Well, for some of the more heinous crimes, they'll use the juveniles to commit those crimes. And they use them because they know the juveniles are not gonna get punished as much as an adult. Detective Francisco Quinones says he conducts his investigations in the same way, whatever the DA's policy, to try to give families like Cynthia's. I want people to know what's going on some form of their idea of justice. Because you never feel the pain until you're actually living. I don't want to sound like these people need to rot in jail. What I'm not okay with is someone doing so much damage and, and not seeing real consequences. She clearly needs to not only be held accountable, but she needs to be locked up for a period. And the question is, what is the right setting? And I don't believe that an adult prison is. It wasn't the prison sentence that helped me realize the errors that I committed and the harm that I caused in my community. I am forever remorseful, and everything I do to this point today is to give back to them indirectly. The minors convicted of violent crimes in the county were sent to state-run youth prisons. Governor Newsom ordered all four be shut down by mid-2023, leaving counties with the task of housing them now. This week, county leaders voted to create facilities at three camp-like settings. But in the meantime, violent youth offenders are being sent to county juvenile halls, and they're not designed for that. Gascon also asked, where do we send those who age out of the system but still need to be locked up? And need re rehabilitation. Right now, they're just being released. Next time on Inside LA County Justice, LA is now the only county in California that bars prosecutors from attending parole board hearings with victims or their families. Gascon says the role of the prosecutor ends when the litigation ends, but you're going to hear from families who say they felt alone, voiceless, and re-traumatized at recent hearings. Incredible.